Hello, my name is Aubrey Erian with Erian Lumber Company. Uh, we are a small, specialty hardwoods business located in northern Pennsylvania. This is my uh, third and final video of my three-part series on drying lumber. If you haven't watched the other two, um, that'd be a good place to start since there's relevant information that uh, I'm not going to go back over in this video. So I've spent the past 12 years or so experimenting with different drying techniques, uh, modifying and constructing dry kilns, and building on the knowledge base that my father brought with him from years of drying lumber for furniture making. Um, I often have people contact me with questions about drying and thought I would make an informative video series containing what I've learned through researching, uh, experimenting, and talking to kiln operators with decades of experience. In this video, I'm going to cover mixing, species and thicknesses, uh, kiln schedules, conditioning, testing, storing, and acclimating your lumber. Just as a standard disclaimer, this is how I dry lumber. It's not the only way to dry lumber properly, and I'm not here to tell anybody they're doing it wrong. I know that my techniques work because I end up with a defect-free, stable product, but there's other ways to get there. So um, please dry at your own risk. If you're a smaller operator like me, you'll probably find that you can't always load your kiln with lumber that's the same thickness, uh, species, and moisture content. So I've learned over the years how to mix loads so that they end up dry at the same time. Um, sometimes though, I'll find that woods are hanging up and they don't want to dry as fast as others in the kiln. This is when it's really critical to be able to control the relative humidity in the kiln. Um, I'll keep the EMC of the kiln at 5% until the driest wood reaches around 6% or slightly less. Then I usually raise the EMC to about 6% until the rest of the load comes down. This can add time to your drying cycle um, if there's too much difference in moisture content. Sometimes it's worth stopping the cycle, pulling the lumber out that's already dry, and then drying the rest of it. Um, it takes um, some experience and trial and error to figure out what woods are going to dry at about the same rate. Of the species that we dry, um, butternut and aspen are the easiest to dry, then soft maple, uh, cherry, they dry at about the same rate. And then there's ash, um, walnut, and white oak, pretty much in that order of difficulty. Um, I try to sticker lumber in packs that will dry together and put them away in kiln loads um, to air dry. That way there's less sorting and moving when it comes to um, loading the kiln. Uh, so I might, for example, dry eight quarter walnut with 12 quarter cherry or maple, or uh, say six quarter ash with uh, eight quarter cherry. Um, another consideration when it comes to heavy stock is squares. Squares usually dry at the same rate as the next thinner plank so, um, because they're drying in from all four sides. So for example, I could dry 16 quarter cherry squares with 12 quarter cherry planks or 12 quarter squares with 10 quarter planks. Um, when it comes to date, it only really makes a big difference if the wood is, you know, relatively green. Um, that is to say that drying four quarter that's dead green with four quarter that's been air dried a month or so is going to give you a lot higher differential than trying to dry um, four quarter that's been dried for six months with four quarter that's been dried for seven months. Um, yeah, in both cases, there's only a month difference, but the older material is going to be much closer in moisture content because the um, the moisture flashes off pretty quickly. That um, that free water um, dissipates pretty fast. So um, once the wood has been air dried to equilibrium, it doesn't matter what date it is, even if they're years apart. Um, once they're pretty much dried to the um, the equilibrium moisture content of your climate. So next thing to look at is drying schedules. I'm not going to get too far into the weeds on this subject because, um, you know, I could spend all day on it. There's a 
U.S. Department of Agriculture publication from the 80s that's called uh, Kiln Schedules for Commercial Woods. And you can find it on Google in the form of a several hundred page uh, PDF. If you're the type that likes to read scientific papers, this is an excellent resource and it's packed with good information. Um, if not, you can simply use it to find your drying schedule. So you'll look up your species. Uh, you know, you can use the control F to bring up a, a box that you can search for stuff with. Um, you find your species and it'll give you a weird code like T8B4. Um, you look further down the document and you'll be able to find the table that says T8B4. And on the top right hand corner of that chart, um, this chart will tell you that um, if the moisture content of the wood is X percent, then the temperature should be Y degrees and the uh, relative humidity should be Z percent. So an example would be um, your wood is between 25 and 30 percent moisture content, then your temperature should not be higher than 140 degrees and your relative humidity should not be lower than 64 percent. I run way more conservative than these schedules. Uh, in fact, I more or less run the same schedule every time with a few tweaks because it's conservative enough for any of the woods that I'm drying. I don't need to push production that hard. Um, the drying schedules are good for showing you the limit, um, but you don't have to dry that fast. Uh, and you can, you can dry it as slow as you want to. At the end of the cycle, equalizing and conditioning will help give you uh, even moisture content between the shell and the core which will reduce stress and tension in the lumber. So equalizing is when you raise the EMC to around five to 6% at the end of the cycle. And conditioning is when you raise it to 8% or so. The way I run the kiln, I try not to let the EMC get below 5% anyways. So at the end of the cycle, I just go straight to conditioning. If you, Follow the kiln schedules, they often go well below 5% EMC, um, and that's when you want to equalize and then condition. Um, but I never, never do that, so. I usually condition for 20, 24 hours per inch of thickness. Um, you can get away with less than that, but I like to make sure that it's well conditioned. Um, and I like to reduce the temperature to around 130 degrees. It's not necessary to have the temperature high for conditioning, and it makes it harder for the um, wood to absorb moisture when the temperature is really high. So when you're first starting out kiln drying, um, or you're starting to use a new kiln, it's a good idea to test some samples um, at the end of the cycle and see if you have equalized and conditioned your wood properly. Once you do this a couple of times and you're getting good consistent results, it's probably not necessary to continue assuming that you have the proper moisture monitoring equipment to um, probe the wood and read with a moisture meter. Um, I would take two half inch thick cross sections out of the lumber, at least a foot in from the end and perform an oven test and a prong test. For the oven test, I cut the outer 25% off all the way around so that I can measure the core separate from the shell. So if I was dealing with four quarter, I would cut a quarter inch off all the way around and be left with a half inch core. Then I weigh the core <clears throat> and shell um, with a gunpowder scale and dry it in a microwave on the lowest power setting until the weight stops dropping. Um, then you reweigh it and use a formula, which can be found online, to determine the moisture content. Whatever scale you use needs to be extremely accurate. I use a gunpowder scale because I have one and it works really well. Um, I like to have the shell and the core within a half a percentage point of moisture content. I'll use the other section I cut out to perform a prong test. Um, you just cut the piece so that it forms two prongs, as shown here. Um, if the prongs bend in, um, not enough conditioning, and if they bend out, then too much conditioning. Uh, the straighter they are, 
the um, better conditioned and the less stress that you're going to have in your lumber. So if you're storing your lumber post kiln drying in a non-climate controlled environment, the shell will pick up moisture um, from the air, but the core should remain dry unless it's exposed to a lot of moisture for a long time. Uh, this will of course depend on where you're located. <clears throat> if you're on the East Coast uh, or the Pacific Northwest, you're going to pick up more moisture than if you're in the Rockies. Um, if your lumber is dead packed, the boards on the outside of the pack will pick up more moisture. Uh, this is why properly acclimating your lumber is so important. Um, try to bring it into your shop several weeks before working with it, if that's possible. Letting it sit on its edge or stickered will help it to acclimate better um, where the air can get all around it. Um, if you really want to go nuts, you can skip plane it, let it sit on sticks for a couple weeks or a week at least, um, and then start to work with it. Uh, we have some customers in extremely dry climates that like to put it through their own like tiny shop kiln um, before they put it to use. Uh, they just have a little box in the corner of their shop that, uh, you know, with a heater uh, and a dehumidifier in it and a couple fans. Uh, so that concludes my third and final video in the series. I'm sure I've forgotten plenty of things. There's just so much information to try and squeeze into a couple of YouTube videos. Um, I've benefited a lot from people who have been giving enough to share their knowledge uh, into the public domain. And I feel that, uh, you know, I should give back in some way. So there are, uh, there are people out there that know a lot more about kiln drying than I do. But um, uh, these uh, techniques have worked really well for me, um, and I've done extensive testing and research to get to where I am today. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe for more videos and content. And um, please feel free to leave me any questions or comments below. Thanks again.